Yes, it's the Christmas season. And we're, I'm here with Olympia and Bob to discuss the latest in football. And on this week's edition, we're going to start with a little thing I want to call, I like to call Not Your Nice. And I asked Olympia and Bob to prepare for me names of players or coaches or clubs that have been naughty or nice. So I'm going to start with them. They, who do you have on your list? I will be starting with my naughty list. And on my naughty list, I have FIFA, Van Gaal, and the Chelsea players. In that order of um, naughty. Naughty. And why FIFA? Well, well I think it's... The um, whole um, debacle with the whole personnel and not really having someone in charge at this point is really shameful for an organization like FIFA. And it seems to be not so, like the limelight isn't so much, or the spotlight isn't really necessarily on that, um, what is it called, predicament at the moment. Mm-hmm. But it is really um, shameful to think that FIFA was involved in such so much corruption or there was so much corruption sur- surrounding the um, <clears throat> organization. So I think that's why they are number three on my naughty list. And Bob? On my naughty list, I have Chelsea as a football club. I have Van Gaal. <coughs> and third, I have Rooney. Rooney. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can sense the theme. For mine, I have... League on as, my, as part of my naughty list. <laughs> Just the league. <laughs> it's too much. 19 points is too much. Yeah, it's it's too much between them. But like since you all have Chelsea, it's a common theme. Obviously, the way Chelsea have been performing this season has been abysmal at best. Like, what's the reason for this? Mourinho came to this season as a league champion. It looks like it was going to put Chelsea into the next dimension. Like, possibly winning the Champions League and winning the, the double. But... It's failed. He has like nine losses this season. He's out. Is out. And um, who's to blame? I probably everyone. yeah. I probably say a bit of everyone. But what I find sad is the fact that if it if the players really weren't playing for the manager and were willing to do all they've done this season based on the manager, or which all kicked off. Um, I don't know when because they've been bad all season. So people keep saying it started with the whole fit, um, with the whole doctor situation on the sideline. Yeah. That that whole thing. Yeah, but that was the first but, game of the season. Yeah, sorry. That was the first game of the season against Swansea, wasn't it? Was it? Yeah. I'm not. I'm not hundred percent sure. Okay, if it was, then I guess that maybe people think that's why. But I feel like if something like that can get in between, you know, can kickstart a whole series of just bad performances except from a football yeah. club then the players really don't care about the fans they don't actually care about the history of the club you know that kind of stuff is I guess in modern football maybe is less important anymore because if they're willing to fight, you know to be out getting the same amount of points as teams who are you know in the relegation battle from now from the start of the season till Christmas just because of the manager and a few things that happen on the back door it's like you know, where's their mind really at, to be honest? Yeah, if you look at it, for example, you think Eden Hazard, where has he been this season? It's quite, it's like the biggest Houdini act since Houdini itself. It's almost um, crazy to think that he was their best player, or was voted their best player last season. Where has he been? I don't even think he has like an assist or a goal to his name in the Premier League, and that's quite um, terrible for a man of his standards. So well, I think can easily um, put to bed all of those comparisons of Hazard and Neymar or Hazard and Bill. I mean, not Bill, well, he has been poor. But I still think Bill, I will pick Bill over Hazard, but Hazard to Neymar, which is what most people have in comparison in terms of left, left wing players. You can't say that anymore. Neymar has been like head and shoulders better than Hazard has been this season. Yeah. And you, you guys obviously seem like you're putting most of the blame on the players. So, like, if a new manager is to come in, which players do you think they should get rid of? Uh, it's not, I don't think they can. Yeah, sorry. Oh, let me take it. Yeah, I, um, <clears throat> I don't know if, say, trying to pick up... Because now, at this point in time, everyone thinks, oh, 
okay, they found themselves in this position, and now there's a new manager coming in. Um, so it's probably give it a different, different feel, a different mentality, hopefully, to what is in dressing, dressing room at the moment. And say, like picking people off and saying, hey, okay, you go in general or whatever, might be a negative um, way to go about it. It might just say, okay, let's let's see, let's see, let's see if you guys can actually do this. Show me the manager. I think what was putting who is going to be the interim coach to do to just show me, like, please show me that all that happened from this season is just some bad nightmare that you guys are going to wake up from in 2016 and show me that you were worst champions next season or last season. They were worst champions last season. They need yeah. to really make up for lost time. Yeah. Bob? Yeah, and the thing with me is, if this whole thing is true about the players, you know, trying to purposely playing bad and losing games just because of the manager and trying to get the manager kicked out of the club. If the players all start playing well and they start winning um, game after game now, who do you really sell? Do you sell based on attitude, based on what happened, or you sell because they're not they're underperforming? Because if, if, if they start performing, then I think Chelsea have a much bigger issue at hand. And, you know, the character of the club will be put in the spotlight if they keep certain players that weren't playing well when Mourinho was there, but started playing well. Because then the fans will feel like, you know, attitude is not important. It's their, if the if certain players don't get sold because of their bad attitude, then, you know, the kind of club they're at doesn't really care about their attitude. Mm-hmm. They just care about the results. Yeah. And it's like, even at the game this weekend against Sunderland, where like they were 3-0 up at, after like 16 minutes, and it certainly looks like the players were not playing for the manager then. And I just want to move it to Mourinho because this isn't the first time this has happened to him. It happened to him at Real Madrid as well, where he fell out spectacularly with Cristiano Ronaldo, with Pepe, with um, Ike Casillas, and Ramos at the end. So, like, is this does this pattern is this pattern frightening to him or to a club who wants to hire him for the long term future? I think for someone like Mourinho, I don't think clubs hire him because, you know, someone like Jurgen Klopp or Mourinho, they have two, they're both successful managers, but they have two completely different types of characters in terms of off the field, how they work. Mourinho, if, if a team hires Mourinho, in my um, opinion, in modern football, it's because they want to win titles and they want to win them quickly. They're not necessarily that bothered about how he conducts himself. It's about the results that he's going to bring to the club. Because if you look at Mourinho in the past, yeah, in the past few years, he's always been a bit of a troublemaker at clubs. So it's the kind of thing like clubs, you know, before they hire him, just need to ask if they want to win titles, you know, and in a short period of time, if that's the answer. And if that's the most important thing, then they should hire him. But if, you know... If they feel like the club's history and character compromised, you know, you know, just like Barcelona did uh, years ago when they um, invited Mourinho for like an interview, blah blah blah. But his character, you know, was quite flawed, and that's why they picked Pep. But if clubs yeah. just really want to win titles, then yeah, they should hire him. Who's the better I'm manager, Mourinho or Pep? Sorry. Who's the better manager, Mourinho or Pep? It depends what you're basing it on. Well, in terms of titles, I'll say they're comparable, definitely. Yeah, in terms of titles, they're comparable, but I don't know. Coaching Barcelona, I feel you know you you only have one you only have one opponent, especially like league wise. You only have one other team you're looking at the whole season. So I don't know, especially in Germany as well. Like if they. <clears throat> I'd have to say Mourinho's a better coach because he's done it in England so many times where it's... Oh, come on, Pep's done it in the Champions League. It, Twice. It's the most, it's the most um, competitive league, I think, anyway, by far. At least now, especially this season, this crazy season. But we'll get on to that. Yeah. And uh, so... Just, okay, only. Yeah, I was going to say a quick point on that. Um, Mourinho, you know, Mourinho, Mourinho brings, um, you know, a lot of baggage with him. It's just now... Um, his employers have to think, is he worth the stress? And obviously, I think his track record and the amount of titles he's won in such a short time coaching in his career, I think he is worth the 
down for at least for those three years before he almost implodes and <laughs> ever since the old dressing room pack, packing in that sense and um, I'll just say that really Pep you understand I understand Pep is a coach like he's a man like his philosophy is sound you know he's not passive philosophy and keeping the ball on making the seem to be more um, fluid with the ball and movement but if I look at it he coached Messi at his prime. Like Messi, like it's all well and good with the way um, Iniesta was playing at Xavi and um, the whole tiki taka movement at that time. But Messi was at his prime. That was the primary reason why Barcelona got to as far as they did. Messi's got 91 goals in the whole calendar yeah. and stuff like that. <laughs> but um, like if you look at it, like say Jupp Heynckes, when he won the Champions League with um, Bayern Munich, the way, how dynamic they were going forward, how threatening they were going forward. When Pep took over from um, Bayern, they were not the same. They were, yeah. Robin was a lot more of like side passes. Muller wasn't that like guy that would pop in and score two, three goals. Even though he's now scoring more recently now, I was not going to be really. But, um, um, what's it called? Bayern lost their edge when Pep took over. So you think, oh, did the whole not necessarily going more direct, but passing it around to create more space, moving along to the midfield. Do you think that was like the best move? Because Bayern were by far the most threatening team the year they won the Champions League that, that season when yeah. they demolished uh, Real Madrid. How threatening they were, they demolished um, Barcelona. I don't know if it was... Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So imagine how threatening they were. Robin at that time was unplayable. Yeah. Ripley was probably like the best, well, best stop giving me nightmares bro <laughs> he's just so Pep is a sound coach and I just think Mourinho is well, he's not the best person in the world he's not the most likable person we all know that but he is a very very good coach can I get can I bring in two counter arguments for Pep I'm sorry can I bring in two counter arguments for Pep yeah. Pep. Okay, first of all, like in the Bar- when he took over at Barcelona in the season before, like Barcelona were third, they were three points off fourth, they were like eighteen points behind Real Madrid. I, I feel that often gets overlooked. Like yes, he took over like a team of blessed stars, but he also had to get rid of players like Deco, Ronaldinho, who weren't performing yeah. as well. And it was also almost like the Chelsea t- situation right now where like the players weren't playing for Frank Rijkaard. So to get them again to that level took something special for the manager and I feel that that part often gets overlooked in his in when in the discussions about Pep Guardiola's legacy and also at Bayern like you might say yes they've lost the edge but like it might also be a one season wonder what Jupp Heynckes did because like the season before they lost in every cup final they also they were beaten by Borussia Dortmund to the title twice in a row so like it's I feel Pep has done quite enough at Bayern and Barca to be lauded as the best coach in the world. I'm not sure though. I'm not sure for Barcelona. What he did at Barcelona, absolutely, because he really did take them to like an unbelievable level, like pretty yeah. much untouchable at times. Yeah. But at Bayern, you know, taken over a team who had just won the Champions League, who are just. If you know what I mean, like trouble. it's not trouble. yeah, it's not the who oh, I just want the trouble. Like it's not, it's not the same situation. It's not the same challenge. Yeah. Because the league, I don't even want to, like I don't even want to talk about the league because I just want like buying with <laughs> the league is you know I could bet my parents' bank accounts, <laughs> but like it's never gonna change for a yeah. while. But yeah, you never know. Champions League, like fine. Champ- the Champions League was where I, I, I was looking for Guardiola to do something special rather than the league. But, you know, he's gotten to semi-finals every year, which is fair enough. But it just makes you feel like it was literally the difference for Guardiola. Was Messi just the difference? Like, that. Yeah. You know, if you take Messi out of the equation, that's why he's only gotten so far as semi-finals. Um, but then when you had Messi, and Messi was at his peak, you know, was that really just the difference? Yeah. But also to get to the semi-finals, it's like it's also a remarkable achievement. Like it's the ah, I don't know with the squad they have. That's probably like least. 
Yeah. Any any manager that gets there, that's like the minimum to keep your job. Yeah, but like it's like it's Real Madrid, Barcelona, Bayern. With all due respect to other clubs, and then maybe like Chelsea gets into the equation one season. Juventus, like Arsenal, United, like those three clubs. Those are like behemoths, and like Pep has faced both of them on his road to the final. Let's say he got like Atletico Madrid in 2014 maybe they would have gone to the Champions League final or let's say he got like Juventus and maybe he would have gone to the 2015 final mm. but that's yeah. the thing that's why I want Pep to come to England because to me England will show if you are the greatest because he took over clubs that are expected to win the league Man City are expected to challenge for the league every year there's no top right now in the Premier League there's no top four team who if they lose the league and come second they've failed because it all depends it's such a competitive league that you really don't know what to expect at times and second might not be such a bad thing in a season but Pep has always been at clubs where they're they're expected you know minimum is to win at least the league or Champions League every single year so it's the kind of thing now that he comes to England where I'd really if he comes to England and dominates the Premier League I'll give him everything he'd like I'll, I'll give it all up but until then I don't know so Okay, but and I really he's not going to Man City. Yeah, let's quickly let's quickly move on from this argument. <laughs> Bangal, please, I'll answer that stroke. Manchester United, just for a minute. Yeah, two second of my nostrils. I'm just loving yeah. how you know composed he is with his notes on the uh, sidelines yeah. when, um, okay. when Manchester United were two 0 down <clears throat> against Norwich, and he was just there, like just in a way, he's like he would look up, he would see like um, what's it called, say what was he. Um, one try second of thing. Young, say he would do some moves, a couple of little bit, drop his head, attempt to cross, and then say the uh, Norwich defenders um, get it away. He just looks up and then looks down and adjusts something. I'm like, what the? Okay, I'm like, I'm not in Manchester United fan, but I mean, how can you as a coach be losing 2 0 when you're sitting there with your legs crossed and your pen in your hand and just looking? Like, are you meant to te- telepathically tell your players what to do? How are you going to organize them to say, like, just you not know, implement in game instructions? You know, in FM, you press or um, get player forward or pump the ball to the box. He doesn't do that. He's just like, okay, we're turning it down. We have Martial. Rooney is a fat bastard. But on Manchester United, like, I kind of feel like, although they've had a terrible season, like against Wolfsburg, they, were, they weren't that good. They weren't that good. But is the problem far beyond Louis van Gaal? Doesn't he go back to like Ferguson days where like they got knocked out by Basel and they got outplayed by Athletic Bilbao in the Europa League? It's the kind of thing. But with Ferguson, it's so that much. could never happen. That could never happen two years in a row. If you know what I mean, like you, you can never have two bad seasons with Ferguson. Like at least as long as I've been watching football. Having two like solid bad seasons, and I I I had never seen it, not in this manner. And so for Van Gaal to have gotten two hundred and fifty million, we're spending money yeah. like we've never spent money be- before. Yeah. Also, that's that that's also the problem. We're spending more money than we ever have, like mm. in in terms of at one time only. So it's kind of like there's supposed to be a progression. We're supposed to be getting better each week. Each week, yeah. not getting worse. Once you see your team getting worse each week, it gets worrying. Rather than, especially because of all the money we spent and how the players are playing. So, I don't know. Yeah, just for the investments that um, I forgot who your um, owner is, but for the investment, <laughs> please. Um, yeah, for the investment that what's it called? Van Gaal has done. I think it's been a, it's been a woeful season. If if and honestly. The way they're going, Rooney, I think, needs to be set out for like a stretch of games. One and two, they need to buy some creative. They need to bring back. I don't know if they need to buy another striker, Papa Martial. Like literally, right now, you think Martial? Who else jumps to your head that can score a goal for Manchester United yeah. at this point? Yeah. No one. It's you sad. Think Martial, like, I, I think, was tweeting. Yeah, like I was tweeting yesterday, and I was saying it's sad how a French teenager, a nineteen French teenager, <laughs> is the best player on our whole team. That you guys never won. Yeah, I yeah, I was worried when we even signed it, but I can see how good he is now. But it's sad 
the, when I look at the team and I look for who's going to make something happen, do something, it's a 19-year-old. At Manchester United, a 19-year-old is, the, to me, the core of our attacking. It's sad. Like, yeah. I don't know how it's got to like this. I don't know. I blame Ferguson, man. The guy's ruined my last few years. <laughs> Ferguson. <laughs> Yeah, and, and also, like, isn't, like, you mentioned how United have been spending so much money, but isn't that the recent problem with, like, the English teams? It's like, what made them good back in the day wasn't really spending the big money. Uh, they spent the big money on some players, but, like, most of the players were either players who've gone through the English system or players through the academy or players like Frank Lampard or in Chelsea, like, in Arsenal. Okay, I can't think of someone in Arsenal, but, like, in United, it's, like, Skulls, Giggs. <laughs> <laughs> exactly like there's no core like Rooney who's supposed to be the leader has yeah. been our worst player this season <laughs> by a country mile like he's the most okay. useless I would love to see his stats like just to see his touches his dribble how many times he gets tackled that kind of stuff because when Rooney's playing I'm being completely honest when I say we play with 10 men when Rooney's on the pitch we play with 10 because he literally contributes zero to the team if we're on a counter attack and we pass Rooney the ball, that's when the counter attack is over. Because he will do something stupid and we'll look <laughs> the ball. Yeah. yeah, like I don't know what's happened. Like people have been talking about how he has like drinking problems or he's depressed or something like that. Like that's why he's not been playing well and it's if something's going wrong off the pitch. I hope, I really, honestly hope that's true. Because that's something that can be fixed at least. Whoa, the police. <laughs> <laughs> that's. That's something that can be fixed at, at least. But if he's just playing bad because he's playing bad, then I'm not. Then I, I really, really do think he needs to go by the yeah. summer. Like, because we're paying him three hundred grand. A week. He's a, he's by far the highest paid player in the Premier League, yeah. and he's by far one of the worst players this season. So he really needs to go. Like, just can't carry on. I mean, if they really care about the fans and and the club, then they really need to let him go because. I hope we get manager who plays players based on merit also because Van Hal, I don't trust him anyway. The fact that he keeps picking Rooney makes me nervous. It makes me doesn't like, I don't trust him. Yeah. And so like if Van Gaal goes, like who do you think should come in? Like there are rumours about Pep Guardiola, but he's also linked with the City I job. Don't mind, yeah. I don't mind, mind. Because I, I did that one myself. I just want to win the trophy for like the next oh, three yeah. years. No, if, we get Mourinho, like, if we get Mourinho between now and January, I honestly think we can win the league. I know it sounds crazy. If we get him in before the transfer window, I'd make us league like cha- like challenges like, again because the amount of fire that will be burning in that man's heart just to do it, just to get back at Chelsea. I know, like, and because our next home game honestly is Chelsea. So if if he's there by that game, ah, uh, he's you know Mourinho is he's at his best when he has something to prove. And he has everything to prove now. Oh. No, and speaking about like City, Pellegrini's under pressure. Like, why is that? They started the season well, like we're all like, oh my city's gonna win the league and we have them favourites to like do something special in the Champions League. So why is his job under pressure? I think because Man-, Man City, you're always really under pressure because they back you so much and they're like, okay, they're giving you so much money, don't mess shit up, you know, like, make win something for us. Like, okay, that's the, the load of cash that you, granted, they haven't made the most cash to cash this up, but then, again, you think, um, I think now, the owners are probably just looking, okay, okay, everyone, everyone keeps on saying, and um, hopefully we'll get to the nice list later, because I'm loving Leicester, everyone keeps on saying Leicester will mess up at some point, and, the way it's going, just a, t- a side that can um, score goals, uh, a side to be wary of, because Leicester can score goals. They have scored in every single game of the season. So I think the way um, I say, I'll say the Manchester City owners are looking at it is like, okay, they're just looking at Pellegrino, like, okay, okay, you can see how the league is going. Yes, you're still like, in the running and everything, but don't get too far down. Like, you know, we are, Chelsea's nowhere to, to be at the moment. And, you know, at the start of the season, I thought Chelsea would be their nearest contenders. So now that Chelsea's going to say, oh, okay, you really should win the league this year. Like, yeah. granted, you know, a couple of players are injured. And then, obviously, the fact that they've gotten towards to the knockout stages and gotten down with Dynamo Kiev, which by all means might not necessarily be. Uh, and if 
four goal completion in terms of it being easy for Manchester City. Because yeah. do you know Kev they were really good against Chelsea? Up. Kev were really good against Chelsea and Porto. So that would be a very difficult game for them, I feel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think so too. And Bob, like, do you think Pellegrini's gone at the end of this year if they don't win the title? I think he'd have to win Champions League for them to keep him. He has to win like, the Champions League. I feel like it's the kind of team, it's the kind of point in his Man City career where you're just like, it feels a bit stagnant. Like, they're just... You know, there's no real improvement season after season, like, and there's no real consistency in their team. It seems like once they lose their core players, once company or Aguero isn't there, like, that's it for the rest. Like, you know, they're just an average team after that. So it's the kind of thing where maybe they need someone with just new ideas because he does play. They do play good football. Like, they probably are one of the best attacking teams I've seen in the Premier League for like a couple of years. But it seems like they. Just just have a few world class players to push them over the line with a bunch of average ones like around. So I don't know. I really feel like if they get a new manager, then yeah, then someone with fresh ideas will work. Okay, on the you're going up for your nice list. Like, let's see who's in it. Oh yes, yes, yes. Um, nice list. I have in other from the bottom. Um, the Barthes Premier League in general, MSN. Okay. Even though we're going to face them very much soon, okay. knockout stages, and I'm sure they're going to be across the and Leicester. And shout out to Vardy, my man Mars, main man Mars. I think I said a couple of shows ago that he will be PFA for the other season, and I stand by that point. Mares will be PFA the of this season. Stand, um, how eventually he remains fit. Okay, let's talk about your list, your nice list from the Premier League to Leicester City. It's been it's been incredible in the Premier League so far with Leicester on top. And um, how far do you think that they'll go? At this point in time, I, I'm not. I just don't. Like, you know how say, some teams say you um, um, they want to make predictions and stuff. You know how say yeah. odds are bookmakers. When you want to make bets right now, they you know, fix odds or uh, certain matters. Right now, I just want to like, tell the person make the test. Make an odds on my settlement this season. I just want to tell you that because I honestly cannot tell. They have literally, oh, they've, they've surpassed and surprised so much this season. Like me personally, yes, I can take some comfort in saying that Arsenal are doing things that are to them. But even then, on that day, it just is sort of thing where, granted, if Arsenal were as risky as it can be sometimes. You will not have won that game. But Vardy was doing some phenomenal things. And I think now, the team that can always score goals. Mahrez has to be the most composed player on the planet. I don't know anyone more composed and confident than he is right now at this time. And um, like I said, any team that can score goals, they scored an the game this season. Granted, they do concede. They might not be uh, the uh, best defense or best defensive side. Or go forward, you can always go. So I think, well, I think at this point, I fancy them for top four. I definitely fancy them for top four, but I don't see Liverpool will be as consistent and not saying that it's going to be necessary. I actually see Leicester, our venture after, I'll see them after this year, because we we'll to see how well they do in terms of other players getting into them. But if after this, you know, January, come January, and so that's it, if they're still. They still have the first bit. Actually, pick them for top three picks. Not oh. four, but top okay. three. Okay, let's. And um, what if they lose Vardy and Mars, Bob? Like, what's going to happen to them? Because, like, there are rumors that Gasserink wants Vardy over the winter. And Valencia also wants Vardy for 25 million euros. I think Vardy, if he has any. Sense of integrity, one which uh, not many football players have these days. He should stay, and I think Mars as well, who yeah. would be the um, better target for clubs because he is younger um, than Brody is and just 24. Brody, I think, 28. So, um, Mars, I think, would be the one more sort of that if so this January. But I think, um, I think he should just do the season out, like, really. 
This is, it might be kind of season where Gareth Bale, you know, the season before he left to Roma to make the Trump team. Obviously, it might not be that kind of our team, but I'm not saying that. But I'm not saying that like, he should see the season out at best. You know, uh, uh, what's this now, sir? Like, what, what's this now? The season, the season out with Leicester. Um, just put to his own. I think it, it won't be a Leicester season. Okay, and um, let's move on from Leicester to Arsenal. They're in against Barcelona in the Champions League final. It should be a very interesting match for me. Not the rival I wanted, but like you can't choose them. And um, how have the British media reacted to this, Bob? Are they confident about Arsenal's chances? Arsenal are the most, you know, the only thing I bank on Arsenal... In terms of consistency, the only consistency I know of Arsenal is to be inconsistent. <laughs> <laughs> They're the type of team. <laughs> they are the most, you know, they are the epitome of a top four team. They will never get you over that line to, you know, to actually win the league. But they will always be a top four team. So, I don't know if they have enough this season, like... Even Leicester. The reason why I wouldn't be surprised if Leicester go on to win this league is because when a team wins a football match, I'm the type of person that looks, I'm always more concerned at the manner at which you win more than actually winning the match because that shows me a long term, a long term strategy for your team rather than you know you might just you know scrape through and won the game. But there's been already times this season where I've seen stuff from Arsenal where I'm just like they're like a fifty fifty team like. They can come out and kill a game for 45 minutes. If they don't score two or three goals, the game is still wide open because they go in a half time and they come back out for the second half and, you know, everyone's just, you know, com- completely opposite and they might draw the game or they might go and lose. So, Arsenal, I really don't think they'll win the league. But, on- honestly, I'm watching the way in which Leicester are winning and that's what scares me most. I think Spetta Czech has been a sign of his speed. Yeah, yeah Messi has a sword against Spetta Czech. Yeah, like, I really hope that one will <laughs> Like, for all that's within me, Messi should just, like, I don't know. Oh, yeah, but he hasn't faced Spetta Czech with Arsenal defence. If Pep goes to Man City, especially because of the whole situation with Messi at Barcelona right now, if I, if, if I get that Sky Sports notification that Man City are... <laughs> <laughs> Barcelona have accepted a bid from Man City for, for, for Messi. This guy, I, I have to quit watching football. <laughs> yeah, but, but as, as I've discussed with you personally before, but like it's financially, it's it's going to be really hard for City to do that. I know they're a very rich club, but like it's going to cost 250 million euros plus tax. Plus Messi is going to be there for five years, which means like it's going to be another like 30 million euros per season, which which will be like 150 million euros. That's 400 million euros on one player. He's going to be the most expensive player on the planet. And I guess, but if you, the thing is, if you look at Man City's team, if they scrap all their transfers, everyone else that they want to buy, and just buy Messi, that's probably their budget. Yeah. So it's, <laughs> it's the kind of thing. And I, and I look at that team, and I say, okay, maybe they're not great at doing this or doing that, but... If I look on a sheet of paper and I see David Silva, Kevin De Bruyne, Kun Aguero and Messi as their four strikers for today, I don't care who's defending. It doesn't even matter. It doesn't matter who's defending. I can go and defend because they'll outscore every team in the Premier League by a, by a mile and they'll run away with the league. So yeah. to me, if Messi, if it's pick Messi or get all of our targets, to me, it's a no-brainer. <laughs> yeah, but like another thing, Barcelona. I feel I feel Messi will stay. Honestly, it gets the tax problems are gone. Like he loves Barcelona. I, I see no reason for him to leave, except he wants to like yes. test himself in a new club or something. But, I like, saw I saw a link somewhere saying that that I wants to at this point he's just necessarily the only thing they were sure of is that. Tyler Antonotti will be um, taking in charge of Bayern from the next, from the end of the season. He will be in charge of next season. So I saw um, a report saying something about that the 
um, don't want them to take over from Austin, awesome thing that Austin awesome will drop that line. Um, <laughs> yeah, but wait, wait, I did on this season. Just, just like the thoughts that went through my head at that moment was just messy, one, one messy with our stuff. Oh, oh, it wasn't like just lights, <clears throat> just messy. I just, I just nothing else. Like wasn't my like, reason at that point in time. Obviously, messy help with that before. I think that would be my would be. Probably the greatest thing since Arsene Wenger. <laughs> yeah. But, like, um, let's talk about, like, what Messi did in 2015 because it was absolutely miraculous in the way the MSN or Barcelona's team, even Luis Enrique, like, how they performed throughout this year. And it's... They started this year off, like, really poorly against Real Sociedad at the end of it, uh, considering their own goal. But, like, at the end of the year, they won five trophies, Bob, like... Why do you think the way we took chief that? The problem were, were the tactics. Because when Suarez first got there, they, they, they tried sticking with Messi as a false niner and playing Suarez on the wing. And that was not working. So the second they moved, they swapped Messi and Suarez, everything changed. Because Suarez is your perfect number nine, especially for a team like Barcelona, because he's not just a striker who can score goals, but he's a team player. And that's exactly what they need in that position. So it's pretty much perfect. And... Yeah, that's probably those three guys are probably the best at attacking trio ever. Ever? Even greater than the Stefano, Busquets, yeah. and Hento? No, I mean, because of what they're doing in modern football. I don't like, I can never really want to compare to back in those days because football has progressed so much. And what, and what they're doing now is a lot more impressive, I think. Okay. And do you think they can go on and win five Champions Leagues in a row, hopefully? Nah, no. no. The Champions League has never been that type of competition, yeah. yeah. No one ever really, you know, Barcelona if, with Pep was the closest you'd get in terms of dominating Champions League in the last 20 years. No one else has really dominated. And I don't really think, it's not that type of competition because it's such, you know, the concentration needs to be so high. Like if you switch off for one half of a semi final, that could be the end of the top end of the whole tie so it's the kind of thing like it's, it's a very small margin so yeah it's even Bayern switched up for 15 yeah. minutes and the game was over <laughs> yeah it's hard to dominate yeah but also like I want to like really put plaudits on the coach I feel he's done a great job like it's at first it was like we're playing long balls but now like it's it's, it's it's brought the football back. Like, we're playing tiki taka now. It's like we're playing good football. We're enjoying ourselves. Like, we've had some, like, absolutely shameless games. But it's, like, it's it's fun to watch. Like, the team's playing well. They're defending well. They don't concede goals from corners. And um, I'll say right now, Barcelona is the best in the world again. Without doubt. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think Neymar should win um, one of the season. Oh, Yeah. Neymar. So, so I think they must have been. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I, I think I that, that goal, that goal Messi scored against Bayern to me was the icing on the cake. cake yeah. Even uh, when he did that to Boateng and they chipped over the <laughs> I was like, ah. I was like, there's no one else on the planet that's going yeah, <laughs> to well, What about his goal against Athletic Bilbao? That was better. Exactly. Like, that was like, better. That was like so fast. Like, yeah. like, but this is, you could tell he was pissed off. Bro. Yeah. Well, if you look at it, like, like he's lost, he's lost in two finals, though. Yeah, but like the thing is, like he came out this um couple of days ago. It's like when you get to the finals, like it's not like they got knocked out in the quarterfinals. Like getting to a World Cup final is a big deal. It's very, very difficult to get to. So like, it's I I, I still feel like that alone should help him. Like it's not like Maradona did much in the World Cup final. Like Valdano scored two goals. And Maradona didn't win the Copa America if I'm not if I'm not wrong, but like those are those things. It's like fine details, and most of the time, it's not even the best players who make the difference. It's the team. Well, I, I understand that, and and undoubtedly, it's just the fact that well, you think back to the World Cup, he's not scored a goal past the um, group stages, and you think. Messi for all his quality, you would expect him to yeah, that's cool. at least score a goal. So you look, yeah, you look to the side. You you see Di Maria, you see Aguero, you see Higuain, 
You know, yeah. they're the kind of you know you'd think they would walk past teams, even you know, yeah. all the way to the final. But yeah, maybe. Yeah, but isn't it a function of like the other players trying to be individualistic rather than rely on Messi? Because in Barcelona, Messi's gone. But like, if you watch Copa America, you watch the World Cup. It's like Aguero yeah. wants to do something for himself. Di Maria wants to do something for himself. Pastore thinks is. Iniesta or Zidane all of a sudden so like all those kind of things they all add up and like for example remembering the do you remember the fourth goal Barca scored against Madrid Messi had a lot of those in the World Cup like where like he didn't give the final pass but he gave like the penultimate pass and like yeah. I feel that's how he contributes to the team he might not have been there in terms of goal scoring but like it was there in terms of creativity and in terms of his work I think was good although people Say otherwise. Well, let, let's yeah, stop. Let's stop uh, talking about this, please. Uh, we have. We're there, like. Wait, wait. So before, before we move on, can I just give a shout? That that, that, that there was that goal they scored. I can't remember. I don't know if it was against Real Madrid, but they do that like one-two touch, and then Messi clipped it over, and then well, I think it was Neymar that finished it. Like that was. Yeah. Uh, I don't oh, yeah, it was against. It was against. It was against Roma, who Real Madrid had, essentially. <laughs> Just, I just can't remember the seeing the score. But anyway, it was just or who scored it. It was just quite majestic. And yeah. and what he called Suarez when he scored one goal. When, I think it was against Roma when. Or, oh, was it the Bali? I think it was against Bayern Leverkusen. Wasn't it? Uh, yeah, against Bayern Leverkusen. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, one shot that um, Nick Suarez had out of the blue. Someone yeah. just gave him a square ball, like into the roof of the net. Yeah. He just sized it into the roof. It was quite like Suarez is. I don't know. I think I would have Suarez over Lewandowski. That's because I think um, Suarez is just more like cause he's, the fact that he seems dirtier. Like it's almost like he would do the say uh, I don't know yeah. the the ugly the ugly kind of um, thing in terms of um, I don't know like say I don't know. I don't know how to necessarily um, put this into like words or express it properly, but I think no, in just to not necessarily nice, it's just to but clean. it's not like Yeah, it's just to clean and perfect and all. But um let's let's talk about like before we move on to Madrid, let's talk about Bayern facing Juventus. Like that's one of the standout ties of the Champions League. How do you think that will go? I don't think it's the contest. If both teams play to their to their best, Bayern should still win comfortably. Because I feel like yep. Juventus are a good team, but they were just last season. There was just that kind of you know every team once a year. There's always one team in the semi final who probably shouldn't be there. Yeah. And that last year, even though they got to the final as well, don't get me wrong, but I don't think they're on that level. Like they haven't really done that well this year either. So yeah. they're they're quite an inconsistent team, and I feel like Bayern Bayern would be way too much for them, especially in Germany. Like Bayern could give them four or five in Germany, and that'd be. And that will decide the tie, anyway. And let's talk about Juventus domestically. They're currently three points behind Inter, who are losing to Lazio at the moment. And, like, it's almost as if they gave the rest of Serie A a head start. And, like, right now they're back in the race. And, like, how long do you think Inter could hold on to their lead? I mean, they're playing playing right now. They're losing to Lazio, but... (laughs) It's that kind of thing, like, Italy's also quite a funny league. Like, there's a lot of goals. Like, defensively, it's not the same as it used to be. Like, yeah. every time I look at games, there's always a lot of goals. And, like, both like both teams, it's not even necessarily one team dominating. But, them, I don't know if they can do this for the second half of the season. But that's the thing. I don't know if they have the... Once they start picking up injuries or, in terms of mentality... You know, Juventus just had had a bad start, but now they're kind of getting more in into their stride. So I'd expect Juventus. I don't know. I'd Juventus. expect Juventus to probably still win it in the end because they'll probably just be too strong by the end of the season. Yeah. I think Juventus have either won seven in a row or gone undefeated for seven games. So I think they've definitely woken up this season from the earlier um, stronger selves. Oh wow! What a dog. <laughs> And um, there's also like, Napoli and Fiorentina. Like, like, mind. I don't know. <laughs> like, there's like Napoli and Fiorentina who are second and third currently right now. I don't know what order. They were drawn against Spurs. Napoli was drawn against Villarreal. 
Fiorentina were drawn against Spurs. Like, how do you fancy the Italian teams going into this? It depends on their mentality. Like, it depends. if they play with no fear, I can see Fiorentina beating Tottenham. But if they give Tottenham too much respect, you know that demon number ten they have. You know mm-hmm. that's you know potential Manchester United signing. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> if they give him too much respect, he'll he'll embarrass them. So yeah. I don't know. It's the kind of thing like if they play with like if they if there's like a fearlessness to to their play, they will probably beat Tottenham. But other than that, they they will probably you know get sucked up into the occasion and probably lose. Yeah, and <laughs> Napoli versus Villarreal, interesting tie, isn't it? Yeah, interesting because Napoli, man. They're scoring two mid, like they're scoring goals for fun this season. So yeah, it's the kind of thing where, on paper, they probably should be a team like Villarreal. But especially after watching Villarreal against Real Madrid like last week, you know they're quite. Yeah, like, they're, yeah, they're one of those teams that they know their strengths and they don't try and you know they don't try and pretend to be a team they're not. And that's always kind of a good thing because they'll always try and play the game the right way. And it's a kind of thing like Napoli, as well, as good as they are going forward, they are very vulnerable at the back as well. So it's the kind of tie that would have the most goals, I'd say. So, so in a word or two, who's going to win the Europa League? The Europa League, anyone can win it. Manchester United. <laughs> no, I don't fascinate Manchester United against Mitchell. <laughs> no, I don't fascinate against Mitchell. I think Mitchell is going to win it. I don't get knocked out early because <laughs> the Europa League is a kind of competition where if we get knocked out early, I don't care. But if we get as far as the semi final, that's when I start. I'll be like, well, we're getting this far. We're wasting all these Thursday nights. We might as well, you know, we should win it now. But <laughs> it's the kind of, you know, with Van Hal, the way we're playing. We're not going to win any competition, so I'm yeah. not exactly optimistic. Yeah, let's talk about Real Madrid. They had a fantastic game this afternoon. Thumping Rally by kind of 10 2. Olympe had 2 1, thought like it was going to be Rafa's last game, but the referees had other ideas. Rally got two red cards, and at the end of the day, Real Madrid won it. Like, they won one was legit. There. One was legit. Don't try it. <laughs> yeah, one was legit, but still, it's. <laughs> Like it's my right. Like to be honest, like I, I'm not surprised by the score. Like it's it's ten two against a team that love to attack and have no idea how to defend. At two one, I would have said like if they had kept if it was eleven v eleven, it could have been like six four. But because like obviously two men were down, like like it's it's the kind of scoreline that happens in La Liga sometimes, and it also happens in Premier League and other leagues too. <laughs> But like the, the best. Don't try it. Southampton versus was it Sunderland eight zero? We were yeah, like it. it happens at times. Yeah, yeah, yeah it does happen. Man U eight, you know, Arsenal two. You know, <laughs> it happens sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> or City six, United one. Oh my goodness! <laughs> yeah. I just, I have, I deserve that. Yeah, yes. no. but 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 joke but jokes aside, Rafa Benitez has been under some tremendous pressure. Like apart from the game against Malmo and this game, like it seems like they're they have this kind of superiority against the smaller clubs. But like when they play the big clubs in either Spain or in France, they just freeze up. And it's like, is it Rafa's fault? Because like we saw this trend last season as well. I have something to say about this. When they played Villarreal and they lost. There were times in that match where, um, what's it called? Remember, just formation was four zero six. That had no play. Four yeah, zero like, six. Yeah, like and it also goes back to the classical. It also goes back to the classical where, like, they had times in the match where the midfield was non-existent. Exactly. Like I mean, how do you expect to win a football game when you don't have people in the middle of the park to move ball forward? It's almost like you see Bill. Um, Benzema, Ronaldo, Isco, or Hesse, all like on the line of the defender, expecting yeah. the ball to be played from defense. I'm like, come and take the ball forward. Like, it's not going to just fly to you. Yeah. And so, like, like, in terms of tactics, I don't really understand what the tactic is. It just seems to be a bit of a mess. Like, there's just the back four, and everyone else is just like, uh, <laughs> stroll around the pitch, do whatever. But, Obviously, because the likes of Ronaldo Bill, you can't tell them too much. Benzema is obviously a striker, but yeah, the midfield it seems to lack balance. I'm telling you, that time where they 
They had Alonso, Modric, and Di Maria. I haven't seen a pair of three in a long time. In since football, since I mean, Barcelona. Since only, Barcelona yeah, yeah, since... Yeah. Yeah, Xavi and Iniesta, yeah. I hadn't seen one. The, the balance they had in that midfield was unbelievable. But, you know, politics got involved and then, you know, they still... Di Maria had to go and well, Alonso was sold too. Yeah, he came, he came to Manchester United and uh, <laughs> I sold him to the PSG. He's got to go for fun. I don't, I, don't this. I don't remember. I don't know. Who, who are these? <laughs> that guy Angel Angel <laughs> number yeah. seven the next Ronaldo <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like everyone who comes in with number seven is the next Ronaldo like I remember when the pie was next Ronaldo and Bob was talking about him <laughs> yeah but like do you think Rafa should go and if he does who should come in it's the kind of thing like I don't Especially with someone as negative as Van Gaal in terms of tactics, you can't really tell what is only Martial is the only player who's played well, and that's what makes me know how good he is. Because once he gets thingy, once he gets an attacking-minded play, um, coach, then things will happen. But other than Martial, it seems like Van Gaal's ruined every other player in, in the team. So mm, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's move. Let's move back to Real Madrid. Do you think Rafa should go and? Uh... You mentioned defensive. I, like, I don't think Rafa is defensive, but there have been like, some allegations by the media, especially the mainstream media, that Rafa Benitez is a defensive coach, but I don't buy that. Because, no, like, I don't buy that either. He's never been one. Yeah, like he's had more shots than, um, than any other team in like the past season, apart from this game. Like, even before this game, it's like, we're going to get a lot of shots. And like, even going back to the game against Villarreal, where like, in the first half, they were absolutely dominated by Villarreal but in the second half they could have had five or six goals six goals yeah yeah they were just wasteful yeah and like what's what's the problem behind the wastefulness because we didn't see that under Ancelotti where they created less chances but they were more efficient I think it's a concentration thing I don't think the players mind like psychologically that their mind is really there especially in the Villarreal game like like when they were missing chances players weren't really looking like they were you know angry or frustrated it's, it's that kind of thing like they would just kind of frown for like one or two seconds and then just kind of stroll back up the pitch. Like, no one really seemed yeah, to be out bother. Yeah. yeah, they were like, oh, we'll get another one again. And then, yeah, like, there was no real urgency at times. I mean, they definitely switched it up in the second half, but, you know, in terms of concentration, they missed chances that, you know, on another day, they'll be tucking away with ease. So, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, they just didn't really seem like they were really up for it at all, which is down to the manager also. No, so Rafa should go <laughs> or should stay? Yeah, I, mean, I think players have too much power these days. Oh, okay, so you think Rafa should stay? It's the kind of thing like clubs build their philosophies based around players more than around coaching. I think mm-hmm. that's the problem. Like all this stuff that's happening, players aren't playing for the manager. Blah blah blah. There's a there's a level of respect that you should build within your own players to know that. EE, even if they're not happy with the manager, there's a level of respect they should have for the club, the fans, and themselves to conduct themselves in a certain way. But at some clubs, I guess that's just not the, the case because there's just too many egos. Yeah. yeah, let's talk about two of those egos, Gareth Bale, who's, had, who's been impressive of late. Apart from his four goals today, like in the game against Villarreal, was one of the standout performance. And also there's Cristiano Ronaldo, who's been, I don't know, has been hot and cold this season. Yeah, because I, I even saw a statistic that, you know, with Benzema, Bale and Ronaldo, out of the 31 goals they've scored combined, 28 have come against teams in the bottom half of the table. Which just wow. shows you that, you know, they dominate games, you know, they play, are they really playing well? Or, you know, their talent and all that kind of stuff just kind of overpowers a lot of the worst, like, Worst teams in the league. Yeah. If that's really the case, because if, yeah, like if, if they've only scored, yeah, if they've only scored three goals combined against team the top half of the league, that's pretty. That's pretty poor. I mean, if you look at Barcelona's front three, I'm sure they've scored. You know, the same as they've scored against Real Madrid against other teams as well. So yeah. it's kind of like there's a massive difference. Yeah, and also you look at a game like today right. where like, a game like today where. Yeah, like where it was like against nine men, and like they just start to start scoring. Like they park a lot of stats that helps them, 
that's officially like okay, Bill scored Bill scored like six, seven goals. Like he must be doing well in the league, but you look at it like and it's like, okay, he's only scored four against Rayo. Or you look at Ronaldo, yeah. where it's like, oh, he scored so many goals, but like fifteen or I think it was sixteen have come against Shakhtar, Malmo and Espanol. And like then you look at the rest of the goals and like it's not against the top teams. Like is Ronaldo in decline? That's what I'm trying to say. He's not happy. He wants to go back to meet his boy in red. <laughs> his boy's in the Europa League. His boy's in the Europa League. If Mourinho comes back, Ronaldo's not coming to the United, there's no way. Yeah. He won't play under Mourinho again. Yeah, his boy's in the Europa League. <laughs> yeah, but like, exactly. Bob, why do you, you've watched Ronaldo for such a long time. Like, are you surprised by his lack of, like, impotence against big teams or his importance against big teams are you surprised by that it's, I think his time at the club has come to an end like he has nothing once he passed you know all time goal scorer like he has literally done everything he can at that club like there's nothing else he could do anymore so Except for his I think, like he needs he has nothing more to prove there. so he just needs to leave like yeah. so I could, like he's probably when, when I watch him play now I think he's in third gear like yeah. I don't really think he's up here. He once he met that goal scoring thing, he hasn't looked like he has any particular hunger to yeah. play. Okay, and so, let's yeah, I think it times up. Yeah, let's talk about Roma quickly. Um, Roma is like the almost like perfect opponent for Real Madrid because like Rudy Garcia is under pressure. The results haven't been good in Italy, but like on the other hand, you look at Real Madrid; they haven't beaten an Italian side in a two-legged affair since nineteen eighty-seven. How do you see this time going? Nah, I think there'll still be too much. I mean, Roma can maybe upset them in Italy, but I mean, it's the kind of thing like, I actually don't know, because both of these teams are so inconsistent that I can't really trust Real Madrid, because I feel like if Real Madrid play a good, organised team, they could easily lose games. Yeah. So it's the kind of thing like if Roma come and they're organized and they and their concentration is like you know a hundred percent, then anything can happen really. But if they switch off for a sec or they're you know intimidated by the players etc., then yeah, Real Madrid will probably walk over them. But I can see it yeah. only being like maybe on aggregate one team will win by like one goal or one or two goals. Like it won't be anything of. Yeah. And any chance of Roma just finishing fourth with Celta Vigo and Villarreal hot in the tail? No, no, no. Nah. Real Madrid is still finished second. Those kind of teams can't last because they'll get no, particular no. injuries, yeah. and teams will start realizing things about them anyway. Yeah, but there's still Atletico Madrid who are on top of Real at the moment. But I guess that's another. Yeah, I mean, maybe Atletico, but yeah, I don't know. Like, there's still so much to play for, but it's just. I guess that's it for us for today. Thanks everyone for listening and Feliz Navidad. <laughs>